Hey guys, I'm Rachel Cruz. I'm George Campbell. And this is Smart, Smart Money, Money Happy, Happy Hour. Hour. Cheers, George. Cheers. Wow, look at this burnt marshmallow. Can we put it in the drink? Top. I don't think so. I don't think you want a soggy marshmallow. That's okay. just, you know, I wasn't a Boy Shoot. Scout, but I feel like that's one of the rules. And I may set it on the, I may set it because I feel like it's tumbling. All right. Well, anyways, this is the show where two friends who happen to be money experts talk about what you're talking about. So everything from pop culture, current events, and money. And before we get into today's episode, Rachel, I want to say to you and all the viewers, an early Happy New Year. Yes. I know this is like the in-between time between Christmas and New Year. I could love this time. I think this so is like great. fun. Yes. You, don't, you don't really know what time is anymore. That it? That's exactly right. You You're lose just full all of beef sense and of cheese time. And, you know. It's good. So we're so glad you're here with us. And next time you see us, it'll be a new year. That's wild. 2024. We should sing Old Lang Syne at the end. <gasps> I wish we could. I think it's a beautiful if song. If you could sing, I would do it. I never know what they say in that song. You don't need to. It's more about the feeling you get mm-hmm. versus the lyrics. That's fair. You know? Do you know what it means? Couldn't tell you. Okay, good. Anyways. Google it. Figure it out. Here we are. Well, today, we're not talking New Year. We're talking about resetting the hype meter, okay? In response to the recent buzz around Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey's relationship, it is our civic duty to initiate a healthy cultural reset. We are the ones who have been tasked with this, Rachel. Yeah, I don't know if I want the reset on that specific, but we do know that a lot of things in life and in the last year— may have been underhyped or overhyped. So we're going to talk about all different things in regards to you, your life, and your money in this episode. We'll give you our takes, and only one of us will be right. <laughs> done, that done. would be awesome. But what are we sipping on, George? Uh, we are sipping on this budget-friendly signature cocktail. It is a smoked campfire mule. It's really good. I got to say, it's one of the better ones we've had lately. I think it's really fun. It's as fancy as it sounds, but it's actually really cheap to make. So stay tuned till the end of the episode. We'll give you our rating, reveal the cost per glass, and of course, we've got the recipe in the show notes for you. Okay, George, so let's uh, put our instincts to the test with... This episode, because we're going to play a big game of big overhyped or underhyped. All right. So we've dun, been dun, given dun. a list of products, financial advice, celebrities, et cetera. And we're going to share our thoughts on whether we think they're overhyped or underhyped or maybe properly hyped. I, I think, think there's an in-between. Yeah. And let's go like, let's like boom, boom, boom Lightning boom. round. Yeah, we got ready? a lot to discuss here. All right. Taylor Swift becoming a billionaire, overhyped or underhyped? Underhyped. I feel like it really wasn't a big deal. I feel like people didn't really talk about it. If you become a billionaire... And especially at her age, I feel like everyone should be like. Agreed. I mean, well done. And she did it tastefully. I mean, you yes. Know, she didn't run like a giant tech company. You know what I right. mean? Like, obviously, talent. she's a celebrity musician, but this has taken a, a lot of hard work to get to. There's a business mindset that has to be in place in order to achieve that, right? Yes. So she's, I think she's brilliant. And so. when you think about a billion, that's a thousand millions. I love saying that about billions. Well, it just helps me go, because when you hear billionaire, you're like, okay, that's a lot of money. <laughs> when you hear like, if I had a million dollars, I need to do that a thousand more times, that hurts my brain. So it just helps me yeah. put it in context. Yeah. So kudos to Taylor. Well I done, agree. Tay-Tay. Underhyped. Well that's done. amazing. And we love a female billionaire. More of that in 2024. George, I hope cheers Rachel. To that. I hope you get there. <laughs> your lifetime. Cheers. To Mostly because I want to just have more billionaire friends. I feel like I'm. You want more? Do you have one? I don't think I have any. Now that yeah. you say it, <laughs> I don't know if I, I don't think I do either. Yeah, if they're out there, please let me know. If you're secretly a billionaire, okay, that was a good one. We agreed on that. All right, next. Under hype. Costco. I'm going to say overhyped. Oh, I knew you were going to say that. I'm going to go underhyped. I knew you were going to say that. You can't beat the value. And the fact that Listen. it's a middle finger to all name brands, Rachel, when you think about it that way. <laughs> They're the biggest private label bl- brand in the world. Okay. I love Costco. So this is not me hating on Costco. I just feel like you have an unhealthy obsession so you think with Costco. It's overhyped in and George's mind, not in general. It's a little... Is it because of like we get it? You know what? I shouldn't have told you I bought that Kirkland signature pet hoodie yesterday. I know (laughs) that I agree. You were not the target audience for that information. I just feel like people talk about it all the time. So I just and I get it, but I'm also like, okay, like cool. But you could live in a Costco for the rest of your life and you would survive and and thrive. Listen, I shop at Costco, I get their meat, I get their fruit, but it doesn't excite you. Not like you, George. Like, I no. like to go down the aisles one by one and just see. Is there anything new that I missed last time? Oh, see, I don't got time for that. Okay. Okay, fine. next. The Mona Lisa. That's an interesting one. I know. So here's what's crazy. So the Mona Lisa, you know, 30 by 21 inches, 
famous painting worth approximately, are you ready for this? $920 million. It's worth almost as much as Taylor Swift. I know. <laughs> Think about that. Holy son, Tay Tay. I'm, and again, I'm not an art person. People may be offended. I think it's overhyped. Agreed. I had some friends that went to the Louvre and waited in this long line. Not that special. I know. Did I take a selfie with it? Yes. Sure. But only because I felt like, well, it's the like, Mona why, Lisa. Why? Why? I know. What? Why did she become so, such a big deal? It's like when you see a long line somewhere and you just jump in because like, well, I guess whatever's at the end of that line must be really good. We should good. be there. And I know. I feel like the Mona Lisa has that. I'm sure there's some like artistic cultural context that we are unaware of. Okay, I will say this. The one piece of art. You know how it follows your eyes? That's a whole thing. And we saw, I think it was in, I think it was in St. Petersburg, Russia, in a cathedral, the original painting of the prodigal son. You know that famous painting? Oh, yeah. Is it yeah. Rembrandt that maybe? Oh, I'm terrible that at That sounds arts. right. The way you said it just sounded confident. Thank conf you. Hold it, on. it wasn't confident, but it sounded right. The Return of the Prodigal Son. <gasps> Rembrandt. Did I say that? Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm an art historian. Well, Look I wouldn't me. go that far. Anyways, that was one that was one painting. I thought that's like captivating. It was beautiful. So do you anyways. own any fancy art? No. Do you? No. What I can I tell you what I do? Mm -hmm. I go to Etsy and I buy the print digitally and then I send it to the online frame company and they send it to me in the frame, ready to go for cheap. Uh, you know what I mean? So it's it's a reprint. Like famous paintings? Um, no, I wouldn't say famous. Okay. There's one Picasso. It's the Picasso camel. He does a camel of like a line art. Okay, but that's fine because yeah. you're your last name. But it's not like I'm trying to like mimic. Okay, I'm that's, like, this <laughs> is, that's kind of no. what I, I was like, oh no, George. No, nothing. I'm not getting like a Da Vinci, but it's just a print yeah. giant in my house. <laughs> I'm not there yet. Good. But okay. I don't know. Art, I know like art. I don't want to offend art people because yeah. I know it's valuable. Okay. Handwritten notes. Underhyped. I'm going to say overhyped. Oh. That's because you don't write them to people. Um, listen, I grew up in a household where you were shamed if you did not write a thank you note. Oh, it was there's expected, trauma involved. It was expected two weeks after your wedding, after you receive a gift within 10 to 14 days. Like, that's the expectation of a thank you note. And I'm going to be I'm gonna be real honest. They don't do much for me. Yeah. When I receive them, I'm like, I mean, it's very kind. But I think if you were like, Rachel, love working with you. What a great friend you are. Words Appreciate of affirmation. You. I would be like, oh, thanks, George. I don't need you to like write it on a card for me. Okay. Well, <laughs> I will rip up the one I wrote. <laughs> this is awkward. So anyways, I know it's probably not a very popular opinion. It's just not a, it's not a thing. I just don't, I just don't think it holds the amount of weight that uh, was presented to me in life that it does. That's a very nice way to put it. Personally. How about you, George? Um, I think they're under hype, but in a different way. Okay. I agree that thank you cards are a waste and we should abolish them. Okay. Like, don't make me do this after the wedding. And especially after babies. Can I say that? Yeah, babies, weddings. Oh, I don't Let's need to be thank done you with know. thank you I made notes. you. I made you a meal. You don't need to thank. I'm good. I yeah. did this for you. Yeah. When I hear handwritten note, I think like at work, someone took the time to like, you know, write a note of recognition. Thank you for this. Hey, know you're going through this, whatever. Those I think I, I cherish and collect. Now, I only look at them once and put them on my desk. But <laughs> I always go, like, on a bad day, you're going to pull these out and remember. You know, it's going to cause like some gratitude. Do you feel like if the person said it to you in person that it would mean as much? Or you think it really means more with it I written? think it means more written down. There's a finality to that. Okay. Because you could tell me one day that I'm great. The next day, you could tell me I suck. But on a thank you card, on a handwritten note, yeah. I can be like, Rachel Cruz said. Okay. That's I am fair. awesome. So I think there's power to the to the handwritten note, but not in the traditional sense. I hear you. Uh, okay, next, cargo pants. Why did that even make the list? <laughs> I'm going to go, I guess, overhyped. Are, are they even hyped? Who's hyping cargo pants? <laughs> They're kind of coming back. Mm -hmm. Just the, no. The Gen Zers. I think I I'm going to just x -nay. And here's the thing. It's not even cargo pants. It's the cargo shorts. Oh, era yeah. that we lived in cargo shorts. I just can't. Now, I believe I, can't. I I did it when I was a kid. Oh yeah, we even all, into my teenage years. I owned the, the zip off. You had yes. the zip off cargos, <laughs> I, yeah. just in case it got a little hot that day. You could just zip you could, <laughs> down into the shorts. What do you do with the rest of the pant? You just shove it in the cargo know. pocket. And it's terrible because around it's the knee it has system. the flap. <laughs> they look terrible. I guess you were a capri person. Oh yes, still are techntechnically. I, <laughs> <laughs> I guess it made its way back. But no, cargo Capris pants should be abolished. And I think Gen Z is doing it to just be like cringe. And like I it's know. trendy to be 
I can't dress do it. cringily. I don't know. Okay, fantasy football. Overhyped. Overhyped. I'm with Thank you on this, you. George. I don't get it. Acting like your football team, like you had something to do with their winning, is already <laughs> fantasy enough. But now to play a make believe world and put money to it. That is it a wastes next so level. much time. I think it's so. I I don't get it. Yeah, find a real hobby, guys. Come on, go build a table with your hands. All right, and <laughs> with a circular saw. With a circular that costs saw, costs a thousand dollars. Okay, next, and in- investing advice on TikTok. Whoa, <laughs> overhyped. They're everywhere, aren't they? And it's terrible because I feel like a lot of it they're going to a financial product for you to buy into. A hundred percent. A lot of it is a whole life insurance, permanent life insurance, indexed universal life insurance. So run far away. And if they don't tell you what it is, it's life insurance. It's life insurance. They're always like, there's a tax-free way. It's how the ultra wealthy. Yes. It's always tax-free retirement strategies. They don't want you to know about. If they say 401ks are a scam, they are selling whole life insurance. I guarantee (laughs) it. I'll give you a hundred dollars if they're not. Funny. Okay. There you go. Way over. So there's Don't so much it. bad investing advice on TikTok. A lot of it is either get rich quick, mm-hmm. go buy my investing course because I've got the secret. Yep. All of that. Yeah. Don't my buy big it. thing with that is like if it's a oh nobody knows, but I'm going to give you the secret. Mm. That's when I bounce on any on really anything. Yeah. Because I'm like I'm sorry if you're trying to like tell me how to make more money, and there's a thing that certain people know but no one else does. I'm like there's not a trick. If it were that easy, I feel like everyone would do it. So no. I don't what, it, what is your investment advice that you would give on TikTok? I would say it'd be so boring. I'd do it fun with like different Amazon outfits. <laughs> oh, <laughs> like, like every new outfit? I would make it fun. Uh, yeah, my advice would be be out of debt, have some cash saved, three to six months of expenses, and then invest 15% of your income into retirement. And here's the deal. After the baby steps, after you pay off your house, kids are good with college, all the things, then that's when you're like, okay, I have my whole paycheck at that point. And then, like, you can do some fun stuff. You can buy some, like, paid-for investment real estate on, like, the low, low, right? Like, that's what how we started. Yeah. It was in a short sale, and that's how Winston and I got our first property. And, like, like there's some fun things you can do with money and exciting things. But also do the stuff that is guaranteed. Like, do the stuff that is guaranteed, like your 401k and Roth IRA. So that's mine. That's, that's my simple. advice. Yeah, I like the simplest advice. It's five words, and we use it around here. Match beats Roth beats traditional. Yep. Invest up to the match. If you've got one with your employer, then use your Roth options, Roth IRA, Roth 401k, then move to traditional if you are still not at 15%. Yeah, so it's that's simple. Th- yeah, and I think the problem is, though, like a lot of the TikTok investing advice, it's exciting. Oh, yeah. Where it's like, oh, my gosh, wait, what? Okay, there's like a little bit of, like, we're going to get in there. And there's so a new thing that didn't exist two years yeah. ago that I need to get in on. So I do feel like when people hear us that we're like 401k and Roth IRA are great places for retirement. It's like, oh, I want some excitement. You know what? The, it's giving okay boomer energy when you yeah, say that, Rachel. Yeah, I know, I know. So that's why I'm like, listen, do all of that. And then after, then you can look and be like, okay, what are some other things that we could do with our money? But be in a place where you actually have money to do that, right? Yeah. So. Love it. Uh, next, cold plunges. <laughs> uh, I've never done a cold plunge, truthfully, but I'm going to say overhyped. Mm. I'm going to say under. Wow. Have you done one? I think the cold plunge infrared sauna world is actually like really beneficial to our health. And I don't feel like people talk about it enough. Oh, I guess everyone talks about it in my world. Oh, do they? All I hear about is the cold plunge. Okay, okay. But I do think I have seen, uh, is it Andrew Huberman mm-hmm. has like has talked about saunas and the benefits of sauna. Yes, we got a sauna, George. And I know there's benefits to cold plunge, but I just wonder if the benefits are overhyped. Like, is it really going oh, to yeah. change your physiology in your life? I don't know. Is yeah. it just going to make you, like, forget okay, about the other things you're angry about because you're so cold? Probably. No, but here's what's crazy is I look at, there's the book, The Comfort Crisis. Did oh, yeah, that? Michael Easter. So good. And he yeah. talks about how there's a small village, I think it's in Japan maybe, where women have the longest lifespan. And one of the reasons is their lung capacity is huge because they dive into cold water to fish and to do different things. So, like, other cultures and parts of the world in history, right? Like not just right now, but you look back on history, people that were very healthy internally to externally, they did these crazy things with their body and and there were benefits to it. So I do think that there's something. And the infrared sauna, we have one and I will give Winston all the credit because he like researched it and it was this whole thing. And it so infrared, it mimics a fever inside your body. So your white blood cell count goes up. To like protect your body. And let me say this. 
let me say this. I could be eating my words in the next 24 hours, but our kids have gotten sick. People around us have been sick. Y'all, I- You didn't. I have felt, I've been fine. And I swear it's because I do this freaking sauna for 20 minutes, Total five immunity. days a week. And I think there's something about internally, I don't know. And again, I could eat my words. I could get sick, but- Please don't. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. I'll give you a counterpoint. For okay. the women in that village who have a longer lifespan, they're diving in these cold waters. What if they're living longer because they don't have TikTok? You know what I mean? Like there's other but factors Japan at play. Has technology. You said they're in a village somewhere. I, I was picturing a remote area where they're diving into cold water. <laughs> You're telling me that Japanese women are just diving into <laughs> freezing cold water every day? I'm not sure. For survival? I'm not sure. Okay. This Maybe feels my facts. outlandish. <laughs> I'll try it. I could, be, I could be persuaded. Mm -hmm. Someone take me on a cold plunge. Okay, next. Thank you for that. Used cars. Oh, under hype. I'd say under hype too, George. I, I'm with you. That's a big you. one. This is what's funny. People, when we say used cars, they automatically think like- 28 years old. The door's falling down. The window doesn't work. The air's out. There's no, it's just a radio, not even a CD play. Like they just go back to like a 1970s car. But the truth is, I'm like, you can get a great eight-year-old car. Yep. And here's the deal. The way they make cars today are, it's unbelievable. They will last and last and last. So the quality of cars these days, they're unbelievable. So a 10-year-old, 8-year-old used car, it's going to last you. And the stats show a new car depreciates 60%, loses 60% of its value mm. in the first five years. Oh, gosh, yeah. And I have now proof of that, Rachel. <gasps> so we just got a new-to-us car. <gasps> That's right. And I did the math. You ready for this? 35% off the MSRP, and it's a year old. <gasps> That's insane. Yeah, I know. So it just shows you like how depreciation will just totally rob you. Yes. If I had bought that car brand new, I would have lost so much money. It would yep. have just hurt my soul. So I'm a big fan of buying used. Do it the smart way. I'm not saying just go buy one off some random guy at the side of the road. You know, do it a, a pre-purchase inspection. Get a reliable make and model. Do your research on that yes. year. See what the recalls are, what the fixes are, what the normal problems are. Establish a maintenance and repair fund. But people like to come at us and be like, they're telling us they want, that car's going to have $5,000 in repairs in the first month, Rachel. That's the energy that we get. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And, and it's I'm just sick not true. It. It's just not, it's not true. It is not true. It's people justifying why they need a brand new shiny truck. Oh, man. To haul one thing of mulch at Lowe's once a year. <laughs> Looking at you, truck bros. Not bros. Jordan, Lindsay's husband, who uses his truck for good. He's just a tall man. And he's like seven feet tall. He's a lumberjack. <laughs> <laughs> Winston has a truck, too. That's and actually, true. And he, I, but and Winston actually, has a rock garden. And I actually, <laughs> I actually uh, drove it today. No way. You what was it like? Sure half. It was very tall. Yeah. I, I don't think. And it's very manly. I looked in the dash and it's like Max X something something. Oh, like, even yeah. the words are uh -huh. like testosterone. <laughs> yep. Tobacco. It's just like. Tobacco. Bah. It's I'm like it's just like all these like, words. Is I'm like, true. Oh my gosh. Wow. It just feels like a. Just like a man. That explains it. <laughs> did it smell like man smell in there? Yeah, it did. In a good way? There was a cigar. Oh, yeah, there we go. The <laughs> there we go. It's great. It was great. That's the truck life. Okay, All right. uh, next, the uh, the old Stanley Cups. The viral the, Stanley Cup. Not the hockey award. Oh, that's right. Someone thought we were talking about the Stanley Cup. I did. <laughs> I was like, wait, it's the Stanley And that someone Cup is my co-host, Rachel Cruz. All right, y'all, man. Be honest. Ugh. <sighs> I'm not, man. Are you I Team George on this? I can't believe it. I'm now about to, I know. And the only reason I'm going to say overhyped is because I don't use it anymore. Oh my gosh. You've moved on Why? to other cups? And I see one right I here. know. I, I see right one right, right there. there. Can we get it in the shot so people know? All right. For those that don't know, this is producer Lindsay's Stanley Cup. And I'm going to put it next to my me. head mm -hmm. <laughs> so you guys understand just how obscenely large and heavy this is. My hand hurts already oh from gosh. holding this. This is a 78-ounce okay. tumbler. Here's what we, here's here's what, here's you have water what we love for years to come. We love that the ice doesn't melt. It keeps things cold for days. The Stanley is like, it's a brand that was well-established before all the young women. Since 1913, been. Rachel. There you go. Okay. So they know what they're doing. <laughs> they know what they're doing. And it fits in your cup holder. So like there's a lot of benefits that to That is the craziest thing <laughs> to think this is the first tumbler that fits in a cup holder. It is like the thing that all those it's girls the thing say that and I don't know why. Because it's big. 
most big things, big Yetis, they don't. You're right. Just admit that you love that it comes in a in a matte and blush there's a handle and a lavender, and you can collect the colors. And there's a handle. And admit that influencers have them, and it became trendy. That's so all, all I'm able to admit. So That's all, it. all to say, I think it's a great cup. It's a great cup. But here's the deal: I don't use it anymore as much. Do you use another cup? No. I don't have like a cup that I drink out of. I've never seen Rachel drink anything except the drink on Smart Money. Like to be fair, she's not. A, she's not a big only uh, a happy hour kind of girl. She doesn't imbibe. <laughs> I only there you go. Sip cocktails. It's the only liquid that hydrates me. Yeah, I think it's overhyped. And there's other, you know, there's other brands out there, guys. There's yep. one called Swig Awala. I've seen a lot of other yeah. cups out there mm-hmm. that. Also, you can drink from. That's right. They have straws. They fit in cup holders. The technology these days is amazing. All right, next, George. Compound interest. Overhyped or underhyped? Are people underhyping compound interest? (laughs) It's so crazy. But it's not talked about enough, in my opinion. Well, let's tell the people what it is. It's kind of one of these things you're like, I know about it. I kind of understand it. But compound interest is simply when your principal balance. Let's go, let's go like easy math. Okay. So Rachel puts a hundred dollars. In an investment. Beautiful. And let's say the investment earns 10% that year. Now my investment is $110. The next year, it earns 10%. I don't make 10% on the 100 I put in. I now make 10% on the $110. So what happens is the balance that continues to be in your account, the interest is now on top of that balance, not the original balance. Which is like beautifully said. Your money makes money, and that money makes more and you money. You sit there and it just keeps making more money and more yeah. money and more money. And it's fabulous. But there was a great stat I read, and it was like 80% of the value of your retirement account at retirement age Mm -hmm. is not money you put in. It's compound growth. Oh, yeah. That's crazy to think about. So if you have like $2 million, you may have put in $300,000 of money from your paycheck, but the rest was all compound growth doing its thing. Yeah, it's just you just letting it grow. And so, so I'm going to say under hype. Didn't Albert under hype. Einstein? They claim, but like no one said, knows. Oh, really? He's not around to defend it. So. He said that it was the eighth wonder of the world. It's beautiful. It's so, And it's quote. one of the reasons we tell people to invest as early as you can once you're debt free with a fully funded emergency fund into right. the right things. And That's the right. stock market over time, we've seen the S&P 500, the largest 500 American companies, 10 to 12% growth mm-hmm. on average over a long track record. Uh, let's go to the Olympics, George. Olympics. That's a juicy one. Uh, are you a big, like, every four years you're watching the Olympics? Uh, we will have it on. Okay. For sure. I'll say overhyped. I think the tradition is beautiful and, like, the fact that it, right. it goes so far back and it's a thing that, like, all the world cultures come together. But as far as, like, watching curling, <laughs> it's not really giving me the juice. You know, like, most of the I sports, know. I'm like, we can fast forward through this. There's, like, three sports you really want to see. Do you know what see. I think about? Are some of these athletes... Yeah. I'm like, oh my gosh, they're at the pinnacle, right? Like yes. being an Olympic athlete. That's like what people joke about. Like, it's like, oh, you're going to be an athlete. Like that, it's basically the top of the top yeah. of the top. And then for some of them, I'm like, okay, so then once it's there. What happens after that? Are you done? You're you're done. I would so, open like a training facility where I would train yeah, the youngsters. Yeah, I'm sure you have you know? like some career that is after that for sure. Um, some of them, some of them go on but to I be do famous. Wonder, so here's what's interesting. And I would love like Sean Johnson or something. I would love to ask yes, somebody. Yes, you were on their show. Because do you know like that feeling like after you got married where you're like, oh my gosh, I'm getting married, I'm getting married. And then you get married and then like you wake up the next day and you're like, oh. I'm still me. I'm still me, like, oh, I'm just me, but I'm married. Like I, you, you think that like something is going to, ch- a big event is going to change who you are. And is that like yeah. graduation, right? Like I graduate college and you're like, Oh, but you wake up the next day and you're like, oh, but I I still meet, even as a parent. I'm still unemployed. (laughs) I'm still unemployed. So I wonder to the hype for the athletes. Oh, yeah. If so much identity is put into that because of the training and the life dedication that after the, the, even a gold medal, it's won. And then what? And then you wake up the next day, you're like, oh, I, okay. Like, I wonder. Wow, very existential, Rachel. This is very like ecclesiastical, if you will. Thank you. I'm a very Rachel's like, thinker. everything is meaningless. <laughs> Your Olympic gold medal is going to rust. You no. can't take it with you. So I just wonder, yeah, what, yeah, how, how it is. But, it, but, but, it, but it's amazing. And I really wish they had an event where they had a normal person doing the event next to the Olympian. Yeah. Because I think that would be so great. Like swimming. You watch them swim, you're like, come on, they could go a little faster. <laughs> but 
be wow. like, but if you saw a normal person, you'd be like, oh, that's like They're going like 90 a, miles an hour. Right? Or trying to do like gymnastics Yeah, or let something. me make it clear. I don't think I could be an Olympian. Just in p- case people thought, Rachel and I were like, well, it's pretty easy. You could just get into the Olympics. Do you think that's what we were saying? I think so. I think Rachel was getting at that. I'm glad you really well, made Well, you that were clear, a big George. athlete in college. You ran track probably? Uh, <laughs> I'm kidding. I know you were busy socializing. You weren't doing sports. <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I was on the intramural fields cheering people on. That's good. You're yeah. a cheerleader, mm-hmm. but not mm-hmm. the official kind. No. Moving on, Rachel. Crocs. Just gut oh, feeling about overhyped. Crocs. I just think they're just terrible. Thank you. I put them in the same like group as cargo pants. I would agree. They should have never existed. We tried it. It didn't work. They should have never come back. <laughs> so good. That's how I feel about it. I love it. Okay. Um, all right, George, our last one. Only going out to eat when hanging with friends. Should you be able to hang out with friends without constantly spending money? Only going out to eat when hanging with friends. Or like when you hang with friends, you only go out to eat. Maybe that's Oh, how it be. that's a good one. I'm going to say I'm, I'm going to say, say overhyped. Overhyped. I agree. But we have a we have a supper club tonight and it's we do Pollock style. Once oh, a month. Oh, that's fun. We all bring something to the table and yeah. it's very inexpensive and we get a full meal out of it. That's great. So I love that. It's a huge win. You don't always have to go out and I'm going to tell you it's way more fun at someone's house versus always going out to eat. Yes. It's a di- different experience. Yeah, it's different. Yeah, going out to eat's fun. I think it's fun to enjoy. Once in a while. You know, yeah. A birthday or something like that. Yeah. Big celebration. I think I think that's fine. But there is something intimate about being with people, and there's a casualness to the relationship that I think you naturally get to know people better. True. When you're just there and versus like sitting at a restaurant and you have and a waiter. The waiter's and, interrupting. Yeah, yeah. That's so, good. Uh, so yeah, overhyped. Overhyped. We're going there. We both agree. For your budget and your friendships. Okay, George. So to sum it all up. What is the summary here? I Please just tell me. I think, I know, when we look back on different subjects, everything from cargo pants to- uh, Used cars. Used cars, investing advice on TikTok. There are things in our culture that naturally are going to get a hype. Stanley Cups, whatever. Travis and Taylor. And Taylor, yes. So like- Natural hype. Yeah. And I think when it comes to especially trends that cause you to spend money- you have to stop and be like, okay, do I really like that? Do I really need that? Or is it kind of this like subconscious social idea of like, oh, I'm part of the group and this is just what we do, right? And I think that's what happens. Like things are just ushered in in our lives and we expect to to have those things or to buy those things or be like everyone else, whether it's vacations or car, whatever, that it causes, I think, like a real mental thing. And when you but here's the thing. When you decide not to be part of that, even though people probably still like you and they're like not going to not be your friend because of it, there is an outside feeling of having to say no. And I think that's hard for people. Yeah. Well, it, we all want to feel like we belong and fit in. Yes. Like our brain naturally wants that. Yes, yes. So it's hard to then have the boundary or say no or go against the grain and be like, I'm not getting the name brand. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get the off-brand Crocs because I'm a psychopath. <laughs> <laughs> who still wants the look of Crocs, but not the name. But not the name. But right. there's a lot of that in our life where we let companies and influencers and friends tell us what we want. Yep. Instead of really going, no, I know who I am. I'm self-aware. I don't need that right now. Yes. I don't have the money for that right now. Yep. I have other financial goals, and I'm going to like what I like despite what is being hyped right now. Yes, that's right. That's right. And that's a, that's a maturity that I think mm-hmm. we should all – aspire to. And I still fall for some of this stuff. You know, there's still trends out there that, and some of them are great. I love Apple products. It's trendy. Yes. Sure. iPhones and all that. But I just think it's a great product. So it's okay to like something, but like it for the right reason, buy it with the right motivation. And then you don't have weird regret and resentment later on going like, why did I do that? Yes. When you look back at old photos of you in Uggs and Crocs. (laughs) Ugg family, I'm coming for you. I'm talking to my wife here, too. Man, hugs. With the the Ugg comeback. Not on my bingo card. Not on the bingo card. Yeah. And what's funny, I have a friend, and she does do some influencing on Instagram. She has a following and, you know. Nothing wrong with influencers. And I was talking to her about it, though, and she was like, yeah, I, her big thing is she's like, I want to tell people about products that legitimately work. I don't care how they look on my stove or in my, like, I don't care how they look genuinely the functionality of this product has helped my life. And that's what I share. So she said that and I was like, that's really good because this morning I opened up our um, pan drawer to make some oatmeal for the kids. 
And there is a certain brand I will not name because I just don't want to bash people that I bought a set of pans last Christmas. This was my Christmas present. That were present. hyped. That were hyped. They were all over. And I will say two of them still are great. Two of the frying pans, they're terrible, terrible. y'all. Like they, they And they're, these are expensive like higher end. I'm yeah, and like, I got them as a Christmas gift for my mom. Yeah. Thanks, Sharon. Oh. But I'm like and I use my Amazon frying pan more than I do this thing. Like I'm like, "Oh man." So I look and so her comment to me has stuck with me where I'm like, you know what? Like there is something about it. So Stanley cup, you know what? The functionality of the Stanley works. Fits in cup holders, keeps the ice long. I will take it. So there is something to say, okay, what is the functionality of something? And that will truly help enhance your life, right? But if you're just going for just like, I don't want to say the shallowness, but just like, oh, this is what everyone has and all of this. And I'm just going to just jump on the train and go, go, go. You end up spending money that you don't need with stuff you don't need. Amen. And Did I, that make sense, George? Absolutely. Well, and I walk through, so in my new book, Breaking Free from Broke, I have mm -hmm. a whole chapter on marketing and consumerism where I break down how these companies, how they go after us psychologically, financially. And then I show people, there's a whole chapter called Spending is Self-Control, where I walk through the smart spending plan. And a lot of it comes down to, is this really going to add value to my life? Am I buying it for the right reason? Yep. Where is all this urgency coming from? Can I wait a day? All of that, like, sort of little check marks can just slow us down from this impulse spending of, like, the hype, the urgency, I got to have it now, they're running out of Stanley's and the color I want. All of that, you're like, where? I didn't know Stanley existed yesterday, and now all of a sudden I'm, I know. I'm jonesing to get the last one in lavender. You know what I mean? It's that kind of mentality <laughs> that like, you wake up one day and you're like, who am I? What have I become? I know, yeah. I'm a Stanley girl. I'm a Stanley. <laughs> we all have that awakening, Rachel. We do. But and it's a good one. It's a good we're, we're trying to help people, you know, just stay on a budget, do it for the right reason, right. do it with cash, and then you'll have no regrets. And when you buy stuff, let it be stuff that really helps out your life. Long term. Long term. Think long term. Yeah, for sure. So, Beautifully so good, said. George. So, so good. We really tied that with a nice bow on it. I think The team didn't think we could do it. We did it. All right, so it's almost the end of the episode, and we close out every episode with... Guilty, guilty as, as charged. charged. And this is where our producer, Lindsay, gives us a new guilty as charged question every week. And if we are guilty, we take a sip. Lens. Okay. Have you ever tried a DIY home repair or a renovation to save money and ended up making it a lot more expensive? Oh. I'm looking at you because I feel like probably maybe. You, have you ever done that? Oh, my gosh. So I am. I have a, like, aversion to anything where I'm like, there's a YouTube video that shows me how to do this. I could do the board and batten myself. Mm -hmm. Now, your husband, Jordan, is very handy, and you guys did this, and you're very capable. I know myself enough. <laughs> capable, too. No. You uh, you misunderstand. Okay. <laughs> board and batten requires saws, and you know how I feel oh, about saws. Oh, yeah, you only saws. know about circular saws. <laughs> I it. only know the circular yeah. saws. I don't even know what you cut with a circular saw versus a table saw, to be perfectly frank. <laughs> We're just being all honest here. Um, there, I haven't done one where then it costs more money, but I did have one where it backfired. I okay. did a DIY repair that backfired, and now it's going to take more work. Hopefully no handyman work. I'll tell you what it is. Okay. I, d I found a hack. So we had the baby. And I was like, there's so many squeaky doors in this house. It's yeah. going to wake up the baby. Let me remove all the squeaks. I found a <laughs> hack where you can just use like olive so oil spray. With one, with one baby. <laughs> you can just use it like an oil spray in all of your yeah, hinges yeah. and it will remove the squeaks. Sure. I did that. It was worked beautifully. Mm -hmm. The doors were like butter. The problem now is all of the doors naturally float open and shut. They don't stay put. Oh, no. So what happened is my dog, Olive, keeps getting locked in the bathroom <laughs> because the door naturally closes. She wants to go in and eat toilet paper. Door closes. We don't know where she is for hours. Oh, no. I go in there. It's just her and all this toilet paper. Oh, no, George. And so now I'm, I'm having to figure out how to get all of the hinges out, take them into the garage with a hammer, to beat them to create more tension so the door stays oh, open. No. So that has created more headache than I would prefer. That is my story, and I will be That's honest. Funny. It's actually more of the dog's real fault than your fault. Thank you for that. <laughs> <laughs> but also all of the doors closing naturally or staying open naturally, not what you want in the house. I guess that's How fair. How about you? I guess that's fair. Uh, me personally, no. I don't think I've. Yeah, Winston. He's never screwed up in his life. Now, the only thing that I will say that he didn't do, uh, this is so funny. So in our 
bathroom, in our master bathroom, the toilet paper holder is one of those that has like a um, like a claw. So you like oh, just yeah. set it like it's not it's not like a just an easy set yeah, it on there. Yeah. So our kids have like pulled on it and messed up. So they broke it. They ended up breaking it. Oh. So the drywall like was out. The tool like toilet paper wouldn't be held. It was terrible. So Winston went to go fix it, but it still is like at a major Angle. incline. Oh no. <laughs> so the roll of toilet paper just keeps slipping off. I mean, all, I mean, most <laughs> every day. Yeah. Winston, it's a five minute fix, my <laughs> no, man. We gotta go, we gotta go up. Let me come over, I'll <laughs> fix it. I will feel like <laughs> micro so dirty jobs son. in there. Lord. I'll be a hero. So that's the only thing I think. But Winston like fixed our dryer. I mean, he's fixed a lot of things. He's pretty handy. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Winston can fix a lot. But um Call Winston. Just call no, 1-800 Winston. He's not for, not for hire. You wish, 1-800 Winston. <laughs> you right. imagine if he started a handyman business, he would crush it. You know what I told him he needs to do, though? Is an Instagram account, which yeah. you probably never do, called like the Renaissance Man, where it's like you teach people how to wow. build a proper fire and how to make candles and how to play the piano and how to fix a air vent plug that he can he can do it. He yeah. can do it. The range. How to trim your cuticles, maybe. It's, Something, it's you know. Just, just that every there. man needs to know, you know, what tools to have. He, like, started pumping up my tire the other day. I was like, where'd you get that thing? He's like, I always have this thing. And I'm like, Is it a okay. portable tire yeah, I'm not sure. And then our van battery wouldn't work, so it comes out and starts jumping the cables. And I'm like, people need to know how to do these you things. You just follow him around and film him, and you start the Instagram. I'm not kidding. I really should. Without him should. knowing about you it. You should. I really, it would I think, go viral. I think other men. Renaissance wins. Especially men, like, 32 and under. Would really appreciate it. 33? Forget about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Woman, woman goes viral secretly filming her husband fix things around the house. <laughs> there you go. That's fun. Oh, Fun man. question. Okay. Uh, George, I think I finished before you. Well, look at you. That's a first. That is a first. Usually, yeah. It was, it was really good, though. I love this one. One of the best we've had. I may say 10 out of 10, y'all. I think I would get this at a at a bar. Like, if we were going out for drinks... And I saw this on the menu. I think I would do it. You're welcome, mixologist Michael. I'm going to go 10 out of 10 as well. I, I don't know great. how I could improve upon it. I think the the little smoked marshmallow. Extra great. Oh, extra great touch. That was a really Shoot. nice touch. Really so bad. We're gonna if do you're going to make it at home, I would highly encourage you to do that. And I'll tell you what is in it, Rachel. This is a smoked campfire mule. And here's what's in it. It's got bourbon, lemon juice, maple syrup, ginger beer, and a marshmallow. Now you're thinking, man, that marshmallow must really set it up there. It's only two fifty five per glass. Oh, that's there you not go. bad. Not terrible. You nope. would pay what, maybe eight times that at a restaurant? Oh my gosh. So Nashville these days, eighteen. Oh, yeah. Eighteen dollars Rachel Wood Cruz would pay. So if you want the recipe, we highly encourage you to try it out for yourself, including how to properly smoke a glass, which makes this drink feel super fancy. You ever smoke a glass before? Uh, I haven't. I've seen people do it. I got a little kit and I do it at home. <gasps> Is it fun? It's really fun. You get little wood chips and you have a little thing you put on yeah. top. You light it and the glass fills with this wood smoke and it creates this wonderful so flavor. Love it. I'll come over. We'll make one for Winston. So great. So great. All right. Well, it's closing time, George. You guys, thank you for watching and listening to this episode. And as always, leave a review if the spirit leads because we love reading them. We love to know what you guys like. We really appreciate it. Subscribe. Share this around. You know, when you're, when you're a New Year's Eve party, just say, have you guys been listening to Smart Money Happy Hour to your friends and family? That's a great idea. They say no. Pull it up. And, when the yeah. party started at 8, it's now 1030 and we're all still sitting around waiting an hour and a half, <laughs> like, all right, what do we do now? Pull up an episode and just say, hey, you want to learn about money and cocktails? Maybe lead with the cocktails and then there maybe you go. hit play. Do you want to learn about cocktails and money? Anyways, we really appreciate you guys. Happy New Year. We are so excited about, gosh, 2024. Here we are. It's going to be a big year. I'm ready for it. I'm ready for it. You guys, thanks again. And we'll see you next Thursday in a new year and a new episode of Smart Money Happy Hour. <laughs> <laughs>